Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, your never failing providence sets in order all things, both in heaven and earth. Put away from us, we entreat you, all hurtful things, and give us those things which are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock, or the resident alien in your own towns, so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you do. Remember that you were a slave in G Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outreached arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. He said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This morning is a very special Sunday. Uh, This is the morning where we honor all of our graduates, and particular, our graduating high school seniors who are sitting up in this front row right here. Kevin Sanchez, Ben Tittle, and Adam Tittle are all graduating from high school, and we are so, so proud of them. They've all been here at St. Cross since they were little babies, and now here they are in high school getting ready to graduate, uh, and it is just a joy and wonder, and we're proud of you guys. And as such, as a tradition here at St. Cross, uh, these high school seniors will offer their senior sermons, so they'll be preaching this morning. Um, Uh, So we're looking forward to that. You guys haven't graduated yet, but you will be soon in the next couple of weeks. Um, And just as we heard in the gospel moments ago, uh, how Jesus constantly brings life and healing and restoration to all those that he encounters. Uh, These three young men have brought life and restoration and healing into our community here at St. Cross, and all of you have done the same for them uh, as they have grown up and become the wonderful people that they are and will continue to become. So without further ado, Ben, I'd love to invite you up to give your senior sermon. Check. Good morning. Morning. My name's Ben. I'm 18 years old. I'm graduating from Da Vinci Science High School, and my favorite donuts are both the blueberry ones and the chocolate ones. (laughs) I just want to say that I am eternally grateful for the community that St. Cross has given me. This is the church I've been attending all my life, and in this ever-changing world, That is one thing that's remained constant. This place has taught me some of the most valuable lessons I've learned in good times and in bad. The faith this place has instilled in me has been a guiding and oftentimes comforting beacon of hope. The stories of the Bible have taught me the importance of things 
like love, forgiveness, compassion, redemption, and freedom. From the story of how Moses led the Israelites out of bondage in Egypt, to how Jesus converted Saul on the road to Damascus, from how David defeated Goliath and the Philistines, to how Jesus fed the 5,000 with just some fish and bread, the Bible has taught me that you can overcome just about any challenge or adversity you may face. This place has also taught me the importance of community. The familiar faces you see when you step into church are, for me at least, a reminder that we're all God's children. That sense of community has been further instilled in me by my participation in activities like VBS, acolyting, and the MLK service weekends. This has taught me to have respect for every human being who, like myself, God made in his image. As I go forward into the world, my faith will most certainly be a guiding light for me as I navigate the ever-changing road that is life. As I meet new people, I will see God in their eyes just as I've seen God in the eyes of people I've already met and gotten to know. As I get older, I will witness God making new people in his image as the generations come and go. All the while, I will continue nourishing my soul. I want to say to you, remember, although others may influence you, your soul is yours alone. It's human nature to fall into sin and then get back up. Remember, humans, although made in God's image, are not perfect. We are all born with original sin. However, you can rise above it. You are not your thoughts, you are not your feelings, and you are not your sin. God loves you enough to help you get out of your sin, but the part of actually getting up, back up is on you. You have to want God to help you. That, I believe, is the real test of faith. John chapter 3, verse 16, perhaps the most important verse in the whole Bible, says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, so that those who believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God wants you to believe. He wants you to get up from your sin. You just have to let him help you. Okay, sorry for all that philosophizing. Is that a word? <laughs> yeah, I, I think so, yeah. Um, anyhow, that is what nourishing one's soul looks like for me. That is how you can live up to what Jesus taught and what the apostles preached. In just 2,000 years, Christianity has gone from, from an obscure, outlawed Jewish sect to the largest religion in the world. An experience of mine that really illustrated that for me was visiting St. Martin's Church in Canterbury, England during my pilgrimage trip. In case you don't know, the church was built by the Anglo-Saxons in the 9th century on a brick foundation laid by the Romans almost 2,000 years ago. That illustrated to me that for the past 2,000 years, people much like ourselves have been worshiping in very similar ways to how we worship today. Also in Canterbury is its famous cathedral, which we visited. It's a building that, like many great medieval churches, took several centuries to build. I can imagine the sheer amount of faith those people had laying the foundation for the cathedral, knowing they never see it finished. But they still contributed, pushing steadily toward completion, all for the glory of God. Those of you sitting in the pews here today are just the latest chapter in the Christian story. I pray that one day all Christians, Protestant, Catholic, and Orthodox, will join forces to make the world a better place using their faith as a guide. I know that one day, probably not in my lifetime, but one day, right will overcome wrong. Love will overcome hate. Courage will overcome fear. Peace will overcome war. Light will overcome darkness, good will overcome evil, and life will overcome death. One day, God will come down and make all things right. In the meantime, all we have to do is believe. Amen. Amen. Check, check. <laughs> Hello, good morning. My morning. name is Kevin. 
my favorite donut flavor. I don't have a favor, I will eat any one of them, <laughs> except I haven't had maple. Although, I already gave this senior sermon already, and I did say the same introduction, but I do have to say, I took a chocolate donut, I didn't take a maple donut. I'm not ashamed of that either, because the chocolate's really good, <laughs> I, mean, I have to say that. And I go to Redondo Union High School. Now, I feel like in church, church is a community, I think we all know that, but I feel like I am part of two communities. One is the church overall, all of us, and two is my Sunday school class. Now, like I said, I go to Redondo Union High School. I am the only person in our group that goes there, and so Sunday school is the only time when I get to see my friends in Sunday school. And so church holds a special place in my heart, mainly because of the community, because of all the people that come here, because of how nice everyone is, and because of my Sunday school class. I have been going to church, well, ever since I was born, I was baptized here, and I've been in the same class as my friends for who knows how long, but it's been a while, and now we are graduating, so it's definitely been a few years. And we've done a lot of things together, whether it's volunteer work, whether it's just, you know, being in church together, or whether it's pilgrimage. So let's talk about pilgrimage. Um, this pilgrimage trip, we went to England and Wales, it's probably the best trip I've ever been on. Now, I've been to other places, thanks to my parents, they've taken me, I've already been to Europe, so I wasn't too worried about going to another country for the first time. But it was the first time I've gone without my parents, which was, you know, a good thing and a bad thing, because I was definitely nervous before going here, because this trip, it was planned in a way where I, we knew where we were going, but we didn't really know what was going to happen. And we weren't going to any big locations. Like, my trip when I went with my family, I went to Paris. And if you know anything about Paris, you know what the big things are. And usually when you go to Paris, you would see the big things. So we saw the Eiffel Tower, we saw the Arc de Triomphe. And really the only thing I thought was, wow, these things are really big in person. Because I've seen them all before because of the internet and people talk about them. And so the impact that they have, it's obviously cool to see them, to be there in person, but there's not a lot of emotion that I feel other than, wow. Which of course, that's a good emotion. I'm just saying, <laughs> pilgrimage, I just felt a lot different about that. I felt more emotions than just it being cool. It was a lot different because there was basically nothing there. And even though <laughs> one of the places we went to was called St. Nons, so imagine a cliff with a grass fields and some black bricks, that is it. And that part meant a lot to me, not because of the location, because there was basically nothing there, but I just had a moment when I was there, and I basically, before we went on this trip, this was like when we got out of, like, you know, a few weeks after I got out of school and stuff like that, it was still in my head, like school was still in my head, and it took a while on this trip for it to get out of my head. In this moment, when we were at St. Nons, it was kind of the moment I realized I don't have to be worrying about anything else right now. I should be in the moment. I should be enjoying where I am right now. I should be enjoying like, who I am with. And throughout that trip, I was definitely a lot happier after that moment because I just had a realization. So let's get back to the church as a whole. Obviously, I think this is the most positive community I've been a part of. This is definitely the happiest. I could probably walk up to anyone and ask to talk to them, and I, they would either say yes, or I would get very politely declined. <laughs> and there's a lot of events that bring us together, and for the kids, there's, um, there's pil not pilgrimage, there's the uh, pageant, there's a lot of community service events, and the one I want to talk about is Vacation Bible School. Now, I've been both a camper, and I've been both a, what's it called? A leader, what's the? A counselor. counselor, thank you, Adam. I've been a counselor, and so my memory's not that good. I don't remember much when I was a camper, but I do remember a lot when I was a counselor. And I can say I had a lot of fun organizing, not organizing, but overseeing all these events. I had a lot of fun engaging the kids, and it was just a new experience overall, because this was the first time I had ever been a counselor at a camp. This was like the first time I've ever been a leader in any way, and I remember every single year, I don't remember who tells us this, but we are always told that the kids look up to us, and so we should always be a good influence. 
but there's definitely a good amount of lenience when it comes to it because they're kids. I mean, you can't tell a kid to go do something exactly as it's told, especially if it's a <laughs> church thing. So there's that. And I definitely had a lot of, <clears throat> I definitely enjoyed my time at the camp. <coughs> and so this church means a lot to me. I really wish I brought my water up here because now my voice sounds like That's this. Right. Kevin, Kevin, look down, there's one right there. It's fine, I'm almost done. Anyways, <laughs> this church means a lot to me because of the people, because of the events, everything, I've been very happy. I, there's no bad moments that I've had here. It's just, I've always been smiling, I've always been interested, and everyone here has always been happy. And this is just a moment in my life I will never, not a moment, this is a time in my life I will never forget. So thank you to everyone who is here listening to me talk about this stuff. And yeah, you mean a lot to me. Should I check check for a third time? I think it works. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Adam, and my favorite donut is the powdered sugar bars. Um, I am currently a senior at Da Vinci Science High School along with my twin brother, Ben, uh, and I've been coming to church here for a really, really long time. As my parents have told me, my brother and I were oftentimes the kids who would cry really, really loudly when the service got too long or when there weren't enough goodies in the tote bags that they passed out. Um, I was so loud that I had to be carried out of church several times. Um, which means that to all the parents who are experiencing something similar, just know that the whining and incessant complaining really only gets worse from here. <laughs> As I got older and started acting a little bit more mature, I became more and more involved with the service groups that the church is involved in. I started doing things like laundry love, doing service projects, doing outreach events like the MLK weekends the, these two talked about. Um, but for me, the biggest thing was serving at the altar and acolyting. And I wanna talk about that a little bit because I started when I was 10 years old, which makes this a quarter of the way through year nine of me going up the altar and doing this. And I have to say that it has been one of the most foundational experiences of my entire life, both inside and outside of church. After now being a quarter of the way through that ninth year, I just have to say it's been wonderful. The damage that COVID-19 did to education and society in general is well known, but for many people, the pandemic left their faith stranded at home as well, just like all of you guys here. I realized how much faith is a social experience as much as it is an individual one when the power of that group worship was taken away from me. Um, while the pandemic was really difficult, the years that followed have given me the opportunity to lean into that faith as a leader and grow up with this church. So, 2020, everything shuts down, and in addition, our youth group, Peter Coot, who maybe some of you guys remember, uh, moved away. This was crushing for me as I looked up to Peter so much and learned from him a lot, and he was almost like a second father figure to me. When we started meeting in person again, I made the choice to try to step up and do for him what he, or do for the program what he did for me, and step up and try to teach the kids. Um, Peter inspired me to step into that leadership role, and I wanted the middle school students to have the same type of leader I had, and I was so lucky to have. So around the time of October 2022, everything came back at once. Sunday school, acolyting, everything. It just stopped for two years and then it just came back and everyone expected it to be just like it was before. I started doing things to try to make it work as well as I could, things like scheduling, leading youth events. I took charge and teaching how to acolyte correctly, um, which I have only made two kids cry. So <laughs> I'd say that's a pretty good record on my part. <laughs> Realizing that I could teach and help these younger students transformed me from someone who kind of cared into someone who desperately cared. There was a moment around that time of October 2022 when I felt like, honestly, I was doing a really bad job. The program wasn't where I wanted it to be, and it felt like I could never live up to the standards that my old mentors and leaders had for me. Um, it was at that moment when the kids in the room s saw me with my hands and my knees and said, um, we don't know what we're doing but we believe that you know what you're doing, and we believe that you can teach us and try to make this work. And even though I didn't believe in myself at all, the belief that these kids put in me was 
truly, truly life-changing for me in so many ways, and it made it so I can carry that confidence that they gave me into every single aspect of my life. Through that experience, I discovered more leadership roles at the church. I started directing our church's Christmas pageant, which, yay, Christmas pageant, woohoo! <laughs> Everybody loves the Christmas pageant. And what people may not know is it's entirely run by the youth. Um, running the pageant involves coordinating of tech teams, music teams, costuming and makeup volunteers, things that I did not know or had no idea how to help with. And I just want to say the adult leaders that helped me with that, especially Michelle and Jess Gregg, were the people that really helped me like learn how to do these things and come into my own and just develop my confidence more as a leader in this church. I just want to say I'm so, so incredibly thankful for my time at St. Cross. I've learned how to be a Christian, but also I've learned how to be a friend, a family member, a community member, and a leader. I've been blessed with the opportunity of a lifetime to have such a powerful, loving, and wonderful community, and I would not change a single thing. I'm going to say thank you, and I wrote out a list of names of people. Um, I want to say thank you especially to Bitsy and David for waving hi to me every morning and just being so kind to me and my family. I want to say thank you to people like Carol Resnicek in the back for teaching me like how to usher and how church really goes. I want to say thank you to some of my old Sunday school teachers who are maybe here, but sometimes they're with the kids. I want to say thank you to Cecily Bray. I want to say thank you to Melinda Dipley. I want to say thank you to Kimberly Conus. I want to say thank you to Michelle Weisenberg again and Peter and Laurel Coote and my own parents, Ann and Brett Tittle. I want to say thank you to the preachers that helps to teach me not only become an acolyte but a better Christian. Those are Reverend Stephen, that's Reverend Patty, that's Reverend Robin who's now in Ojai I think, and Reverend Rachel of course who baptized me um, around 19 years ago I think. I want to thank Holly, Patsy, all the Sunday school kids. I want to thank the acolytes who are up here right now and have inspired me to be the person I am today. You guys are all wonderful and you're doing a great job right now and I'm just so thankful for all of you and I can feel the Lord and the Holy Spirit just move through this space and move through the people that are in it. And I'm so, so, so thankful to have been a part of this church for the past 18 years and to have met all of these wonderful, wonderful people who made my time what it is and who taught me what Christianity really is, which is just being there to love each other and care for each other as you guys all do for everyone. Thank you so much. Amen. as we reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting that God is already at work within us and within our world, 
restoring us to the image of God in which we were made and guided by the perfect perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ, let us bring prayers before God, responding, lead us to love. Inspire in your church, its leaders and its people, faithfulness and compassion. May all those called to be heralds and apostles serve you, the church, and all the world with godliness, love, and joy. Guide us, Lord. Lead us to love. We pray for leaders of nations, governments, and cities of this world. May all who are in authority use their authority to protect the poor and promote justice. May their hearts, words, and actions be formed by your love. Guide us, O Lord. Lead us to love. God, may, you perfect your, may your perfect peace be swift to meet us. Help us, O God, our Savior, that where there is hatred, fear, or anger, we may bring forth our love, peace, and compassion. Guide us, O Lord. Lead us to love. By your word, O God, you created the heavens and the earth. By your generosity, you continue to cause growth. In your faithfulness, you clothe, you protect and sustain your creation. Give us grace to be for every person an example of your love and source of your peace. Guide us, O Lord. Lead us to love. We pray for the members of this community, for all those who suffer and struggle, for those dear to us but far away, for those in despair and brokenhearted, for those at the beginning of their journey. We pray especially for those we name at this time. May they find peace in knowing that you, loving God, draw near to us in our times of need. May you open our hearts as well so that we may be ready to serve one another as a sign of your love. Guide us, O Lord. Lead us to love. We praise you for all the saints, both famous and the obscure, the ones whom we have known and the ones known only to you. We pray for all those dear to us who have departed from this life and for those in mourning, especially for those we name at this time. May their memory be a blessing to us, a source of encouragement, strength, and a reminder of your grace. Guide us, O Lord. Lead us to love. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would like to invite our graduating seniors to come up here. We have a gift from the St. Cross community, and you all stay standing because I'm going to ask you to do a blessing with me over these three, and you all can turn around because these people want to see you. Um, on behalf of St. Cross, we have some quilts that were been made for you to remind you of this community, the love and the presence that we all have for you, uh, and that you can always have this to remember your time here and all that St. Cross represents. So Ben, here's a quilt for you. I forget which one you had. I think you had the blue one, didn't you? Oh, one of them. Oh, okay, good. And here you go, Adam. And uh, at this time, I would also like to invite any graduates. I'm talking about eighth graders getting ready to graduate. I'm talking about any college graduates that are here, uh, graduate school graduates, or EFM graduates. If you all could come forward. I know we've got a couple acolytes here graduating from eighth grade, too. But any other graduates that are in the crowd would love you to come forward. Wonderful. And what I would like all of you to do 
is to go ahead and extend a hand upon these graduates as we offer our prayer. Let us pray. God of journeys and new beginnings, we praise you for all you have given and all you still have in store for us. We thank you for bringing this graduating class to a new time of growth and possibility. May you always protect them on life's journey, and may they always be examples of your loving kindness. Amen. Amen. And what I'd like you guys to do is to join me in bid. Good morning. Welcome to St. Cross. I cannot think of a better sign of Christ's love than our youth being able to give testament to who we are as church. So a huge thank you to our seniors one more time. Thank you for your willingness to share God's word with all of us today. So if you are new or visiting, we especially welcome you to St. Cross, whether in person or online. Uh, if you are in person and you sign our guest book in the back, we will send you a nice little welcome note. And if you are online, there is a little button that says newcomers and you can contact us there. There is much going on in our community, many ways in which we express love for one another and our wider community. Uh, we have SAC lunch this coming Wednesday. Our speaker is the president and CEO of Hermosa Chamber, and it is going to be a wonderful talk. She is incredibly dynamic. Next Sunday, from uh, starting at four, we have an amazing concert that our choir has been working on. This is a wonderful opportunity for you to invite friends and neighbors to come and enjoy some music with us. Uh, St. Luke's Shower Ministry will be the week following. And uh, June 16th is our last day of Sunday school and is Sunday School Teacher Appreciation and Choir Appreciation that day which means the following Sunday, June 23rd, one service, nine o'clock. We already told the eight o'clockers that um, they'll all show up at eight and just get pick of the donuts. So you all show up when you wanna show up, see what you get. Uh, Bible school, vacation Bible school, which you heard, great witness to vacation Bible school, um, what a profound impact that can have on our, youth, our youths lives. Registration closes today. And uh, Episcopal Dodger Night. Is it really here? You still have some time to purchase your tickets. You may do so online. And a few more thoughts. Um, we had a wedding this weekend, so I ask that you continue to keep Lindsay Morgan Moore and Mitchell Williams in your prayers of Thanksgiving as they begin their life together. And I believe that is it. I wish you all a very good week. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we sing for joy. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our redeemer, you have freed us from sin brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made. We acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true and eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace and be gracious unto you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs> 